Hello, my name is Joseph Madden, and I will be giving a brief presentation on biodegradable plastic packaging with the implementation of orange peels. So here's a brief uh, overview of the presentation. The first thing we'll be looking into is a literature review from a research group based in Malaysia. And then we'll get into some underlying issues for current day plastic packaging. The third thing we'll get into is my future prognosis on this topic and my uh, final thoughts. And of course, uh, at the end, references will be included. So for this literature review, we will be looking at a study from Malaysia uh, that investigated the pairing of epoxy resin hardener and orange peel concentration in the fabrication of biodegradable plastic, specifically for packaging applications. So the epoxy resin used was in the liquid form and it is known as DER324. The hardener that was used is known as Joint Mine 9053S and they were combined with orange peel concentrations varying from 20% all the way up to 80%. And the main objective for this study uh, was what is the optimum orange peel concentration that can be used to create biodegradable plastic packaging that is also mechanically stable as well. Moving on to the experimental setup. Uh, each sample was prepared by first cutting raw orange peel material and turning it into a powdered form. Uh, this was then mixed with the epoxy resin and hardener that we discussed on the last slide. And this mixture was exposed to UV light for around nine hours to uh, properly cure and dry the sample. And then for some samples, a uh, super hydrophobic coating was applied to the material via ASTM standard D594604. Uh, this was this coating was applied for the contact angle measurement, which we will get into um, on some later slides. So as you can see uh, on this graph on the left here, we have samples A through D, and they vary in orange peel concentration, 20, 40, 60, and 80%. Uh, as far as the ratio of epoxy resin to hardener, it was kept constant uh, at a three to one ratio. And then this top uh, visual image on the right here shows the progression of the sample preparation. On the left, you can see the initial orange peels. And then in the middle, you can see uh, the mixture together. And then on the right, uh, this is the dried sample. <clears throat> and then this figure on the bottom uh, shows the varying concentrations of the dried samples. On the left, it it goes uh, it starts with 20% concentration, B is 40% concentration, C is 60%, and then D is 80% for these samples. So one thing to point out was uh, the sample with 80% concentration did not mechanically hold together, so uh, it was removed from any of the experimental methods that uh, I will get into on this slide. So with that being said, uh, these only samples A, B, and C were analyzed for this study, uh, that being 20%, 40%, and 60% orange peel concentrations. So four tests were conducted on the remaining samples. The, uh, the first test was a tensile strength test. The second was an SEM microstructure analysis. The third was a water droplet contact angle analysis, and the fourth was a biodegradation test. Uh, all of the ASTM standards that were used for these tests are included, and each of these four tests are necessary material tests that go into uh, determining what material is good for uh, packaging applications. Moving on to the results, from the four tests mentioned on the last slide. Uh, on the left, left hand side of the slide, you can see the tensile strength test results. Uh, each of these bar graphs here shows the different samples that were tested and the different concentrations of uh, orange peels.
And as you can see, uh, this red line here shows the average tensile strength for each of these concentrations. And as the percent orange pill concentration increases, there is an average increase in tensile strength up to about 50 megapascals. And then on the right-hand side, uh, these are two images from the SEM analysis. And on this left image is from 20% orange peel concentration. And on the right one is uh, um, from the 60% concentration. And as you can see, uh, the there is a lot better mixing between the epoxy and the orange peel on the right-hand side, the 60% side, compared with the 20%. So um, this cohesiveness uh, is definitely favored uh, when it comes uh, moving on to the contact angle analysis results, uh, as you can see uh, on the bottom axis, we have increasing uh, orange peel concentrations. And on the y-axis, you can see uh, the water contact angle. This orange line is the coated specimens with the hydrophobic coating. And the yellow line is for uncoated specimens. And as you can see, uh, we see an increase in water contact angle for the coated specimens as orange peel concentration increased. And then we saw a decrease in uncoated specimens. Uh, coating, uh, coating packaging material is, is definitely important for packaging applications, uh, especially if you are packaging a material that might be left in a very humid, humid environment or in the elements. So uh, retaining and keeping water out of the packaging is definitely a favorable quality in um, packaging materials. And then on the right hand side, uh, looking at the biodegradation test, uh, this test was done over the course of five weeks and the samples were monitored uh, on a weekly basis. On the top here, you can see uh, the 20% concentration and then moving down to the 60%, you can see that the 60% orange pill concentration uh, degraded the most over this five-week period. So to wrap up this literature review, uh, this group concluded based on their results and analyses, uh, they concluded that the 60% orange peel concentration was the most optimal concentration uh, to be used for plastic packaging applications. Uh, this is because it exhibited the highest tensile strength and it also had the fastest degradation rate out of each of the concentrations that were tested. It also showed great contact angle analysis results, as well as uh, good mixing with the epoxy resin uh, from the SEM results. And the final conclusion was that this material with 60% orange peel concentration could be used as an alternative in the future to non-degradable plastic packaging applications. So now I wanted to touch on plastic packaging as a whole and get into a few underlying issues that are involved with this. Uh, so first of all, the majority of plastic packaging uh, is manufactured using non-degradable materials. Uh, they typically have favorable mechanical properties compared to biodegradable packaging material options. And these materials can be seen anywhere from plastic bags, food and drink packaging, and even consumer product packaging. Uh, one of the largest issues is the improper disposal of this non-degradable packaging, and it is one of the driving forces for biodegradable alternatives. Uh, a lot of the packaging uh, is improperly disposed by the consumer, and even the companies that uh, manufacture uh, so this sort of material. Uh, also, finding a biodegradable alternative with sufficient mechanical strength, uh, that would help reduce the overall plastic pollution of these, this residual packaging material. But it is very difficult to uh, find a alternative with comparable mechanical strength to non-degradable plastic packaging. Uh, overall, there are fewer negative reperc repercussions for biodegradable packaging compared with non-degradable packaging, and that's why 
it is such a focus uh, to create and um, study the uh, effects and mechanical properties of biodegradable plastic material. Moving on to my future prognosis and the future of biodegradable plastic packaging material as a whole. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is the demand for this sort of biodegradable material increases every day with a lot of focus on sustainability uh, in mind. So that's great. Uh, research like the article that we reviewed is essential for making this sort of progress toward a more sustainable future. Uh, any sort of research like this is an, an important step in the right direction, and every single one of these steps counts. And in general, I would say the future is bright for the biodegradable packaging industry, but there's a lot that still needs to be done and a lot more research and testing and education needs to be done to um, reach a point where we have really good sustainable packaging uh, applications. So finally, I just wanted to uh, wrap this presentation up with a few of uh, my final thoughts on this article specifically, I thought it was, it was very well written and it was easy for anyone to follow. I believe that uh, this is a very important characteristic, uh, especially when it comes to this topic on sus sustainability, because I believe that the uh, education of people on a topic such as biodeg biodegradability, uh, that education is invaluable and it's super important uh, for just the future in general for this um, topic. And uh, I, I thought that this group had great analytical processes and they followed um, the ASTM guidelines uh, very well. And then I also thought it was exciting to see just the global effort in the research for biodegradable plastics. Uh, this is the first uh, well, this group was based in Malaysia, and it's really cool to see uh, how the search for these biodegradable degradable materials is a worldwide issue, and uh, it's great to see uh, everybody doing their part uh, toward, toward this issue. And uh, one thing that I uh, wish that this article included was a specific packaging application or recommendation for the material that they, for the 60% orange peel concentration that they included on. They weren't very specific with uh, any sort of applications it could be used for. So I would have loved uh, maybe just a quick paragraph detailing what it could be used for. And then uh, just two final questions. Uh, my first question was, could a concentration of orange peels above 60 or between 60% and 80% yield even more favorable results. Uh, as I said at the beginning, 80% was voided from this analysis because uh, the sample wasn't mechanically stable, but uh, I'm interested to see if they could have bumped up the concentration just maybe a little bit more, maybe to 65% or 70% and uh, kind of looked at the results of that. And then uh, my final question was, uh, could similar fruits um, be used for biodegradable packaging as well. Similar fruits to orange, oranges being such as like limes or lemons. I, I would love to see uh, some research on those um, fruits. I think that would be really interesting. And it would be interesting to see how those samples would compare to the uh, orange samples that uh, were studied in that uh, article. Uh, here's a quick uh, citation of the article that was reviewed, as well as a few links to images that were used uh, for this presentation. Thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to this presentation. I encourage you to uh, go into the article that I reviewed today and uh, read it fully. It was super interesting, and this topic in general was really uh, fun to look into. And I had a really good time uh, looking into uh, biodegradable packaging uh, options.